And you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Another top five. Top five ways to keep yourself out of harm's way. Avoiding conflict. Trying to make your bed smooth. Now, this is a list that I could probably just go on and go on. Because there's literally only a couple things you're going to be able to do to possibly stay out of trouble. And there's an entire list of things you can do to find yourself in hot water. Now, I thought about this list. I put thought into this list. Because for guys that have never been locked up, I hope this can help you if you're headed down that path. I hope you're not. hope you're making the right choices in life. hope that's not the journey you have to take. But if it should be, this is your video. This is a video you want to watch. For the guys that have been locked up, you can sit back and go, yup. And also, feel free to chime in in the comment section. If you don't think my top five is right, what would your top five be? Now, I put things in order. The order might not be you know, 100%, but these are definitely five things you don't want to do. Yes, definitely don't want to do. Not five things you want to do. Do not do these five things. I'm not saying you're not going to have trouble. There's trouble all around you in there. Everywhere you look, there's trouble. There's guys that wake up, that eat, sleep, and breathe trouble. Sometimes it's all in just if they look over in your direction and decide today's the day that you're going to find yourself in some trouble. But hopefully you can use this list and avoid a whole lot of pain, suffering, time in the hole, write-ups, disciplinary reports, etc. Guess what? It's a very good chance. Some of that's going to happen. It is Wednesday, January 17th, if you're catching this on the day that it dropped. If not, it might be a later date. But today, Wednesday, January 17th. But all that being said, you know how to see it. You know how to lived it. So, let's relive it. Number five. Numero cinco. This one was hard for me as far as where to put it on my list. Thought long and hard. Could have been number one. But... It fell in with number five. Acting hard. You've all heard the go in there and find the biggest dude. You do not do not punch the biggest dude that you see when you go to jail. Do don't don't do that. Please. For the love of God, for the love of your teeth, um, mental health, physical health, don't do that. But you've heard that. I guess that's the way you're supposed to. It's one of those urban legends that it displays dominance. It shows everybody, you the man, who you are, you'll get down. you have plenty of time for that if that's what you want to do. Don't do that. But acting hard. You know how many guys I've seen that just walked around all day like they were made out of titanium? Like they had a Terminator underneath their skin. Like these dudes, were, they just thought they were like that. And for them, for a lot of inmates, it's kind of like the... Like the pit bull look. You know what I mean? Like you see a pit bull. It can be the sweetest dog in the world. But you look at it. You're like, oh, hell no. Stay, no, no. You're not about to bite me. You see it's a pit bull. You automatically assume it's aggressive. A lot of dudes put on that mask. That pit bull mask. And they walk around hard all day. Well, here's the problem with that. If you're acting hard. And you're really not hard. And you just want to walk around. me mugging. A doo-doo mouth all day. Just stank face. Resting face. Just all day long. You're going to run across other guys just like that. But the difference between you and them, they're not acting. They really hate life. They really hate you. They hate everything about why they woke up today. The world disgusts them. And it's written on their face. And here you come down the hallway. Trying to put on that convict look. Guys are going to see through it. And if they don't see through it, you might be the best in the world at convincing people that you're tough. Somebody's going to test it. In due time, when somebody spazzes out, they're not always looking for the weak guy. Sometimes somebody really wants to clash. Sometimes they want to show others what they're about. You don't do that by beating up on the weak guy. You do that by beating up on somebody of your caliber or better. They scan the room and there you stand with a mean mug on your face. Now, I'm not saying don't be tough. I'm not saying don't defend yourself. I'm not saying don't stand up for yourself. I'm simply saying if you ain't about that life, don't walk around all day like you are because somebody's going to check you. Some of the angriest men that I ever met, the angriest, I would later come to find out, really weren't angry. That was just the, the facade they had to put on to everybody else, kind of like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. But for the most part, I had seen the majority of those men get into some type of confrontation at some point or another. Just be standing there, scanning the room, with the mean mug on your face. Now, to the average person, if you don't, you don't got that look on your face, you're just 
checking your environment. You're just looking around. When you got that mean mug on your face and you make eye contact with somebody, and he looks back, now y'all got a problem. Because it's not a very inviting look. It's not a, a humbling look. It's not a friendly look. It's a look of trouble to come. To a man that don't know you, that just met you, that looks over there and sees you standing there, that's trouble. Don't do that. Fix your face. Now they say don't start nothing, won't be nothing. I'm not going to stand here and say that's that world because it's not. You ain't got to start nothing. Guys are going to start stuff. But you can definitely limit the altercations you get into. By now trying to look tough all day. Things aren't always what they seem. I've walked into cells before. I took one look at the person I'm in the cell with and be like, oh man, not one of these guys. Just looks like the, the most miserable, angry man in the world. And after about five minutes of talking, takes off the mask, he smiles, he laughs, he jokes, he talks. To everybody outside that cell, they think he's crazy. They think he's the angriest person. They think he's just off his rock and violent all the time. But to the guys that know him, ah, he's a good dude. Cool dude. He's putting on a mask. Don't forget you ain't the only one wearing a mask. People generally flock to what they can relate to. So if you're standing around looking mad all day, the other guys that are actually mad, and due time are going to push in your direction. Humble yourself. Or walk around like you can't get beat. Because I can promise you, for every man in there that you can whoop, there's somebody that can whoop you. Facts. Number four. Number four. Them guards. Leave them alone. Don't nobody like the dude that's always in the guard's face. I can give you a story real quick, but I'm just going to cut to the short version. We had a dude that always liked to talk to the females. I mean, was constantly talking to the females. Which that's not as frowned on as much as it is if you're talking to a dude. Because with a female, ah, you might be trying to weasel your way in the door. But this dude would run up and talk to any female that came in there. We called it putting the handcuffs on him. You might be in a tattoo and this dude sees a female, goes over and talks to her. Now he's got the guard stuck up in the pod. You're in a tattoo and you're trying to hide the dude you're tattooing, doing illegal stuff. You can go to the hole. This guy wants to talk to him. We get a newer guard in there. She's not. She's new to us. She wasn't new. She come from another part of the compound. And this dude will go up there and constantly be trying to talk to her. Well, in the meantime, another inmate then slid up on her and really started talking to her. And is, is trying to get busy with her. And this dude's always up there pretty much cock blocking him. Always up there at the booth. So this dude eventually... Goes upside his head. Get away from the control booth. Every time I come up here, you at the control booth. Back up off the control booth. There's the angry part again. Dude don't take heed to it. Old boy goes up there and tries to spit game at the guard. And here comes dude to the booth trying to talk again. And boop, 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 boop. Leave the guards alone. It can A, make people think that you're telling them. It can B, put the guards in there longer than you want them in there. And when he goes to leaving the guards alone, there's many lanes that come along with this. Listen to me now. If you get into it with a guard, if you're not going to take it there, and I mean take it there, leave it alone. If you ain't prepared to do another five years for going upside that guard's head, leave it alone. Don't stand there and argue with him. Don't go back and forth with him because you're always wrong. You're not right. Even when you're right, you're wrong. And when you're wrong, you're wrong. That's just how it goes. And if you ain't wrong, they will somehow prove that you are wrong. You don't have the rights you have out here. You're not going to stand there and argue with a guard like you would a cop out here. I've dealt with it. I've seen others deal with it. They will whoop your ass. They will take you somewhere, get you in a hallway, get you in the hole, get you in an area where nobody can see, and they will whoop your ass. You don't want that. They will write you up nonstop for stuff they would usually let slide because you want to run your mouth and you want to beef with the guard and you want to argue with the guard. Now, everything you do, you can get wrote up for it. That's going to change your release date. That's going to send you to the hole multiple times, time and time again. They're going to come in and start tearing your cell up. You've got a cellmate. He's not going to be too happy when these guards are in y'all's hut, when these guards are in the cell, when they come in there and they just start flipping everything, going through all his stuff, tearing stuff up, discombobulating, mixing everything, dumping stuff out in the sink, searching through shampoo bottles, emptying out coffee. Like, your cellmate's not going to be too happy when you disturb the way he lives and have these guards riding down on him because you want to argue with the guard. That will also cause them to be in the pod more. Because when they ain't got nothing better to do, it's 
But I'm going to go mess with old Sammy Sausage here that likes to run his mouth. Hey, throw your gloves on real quick. Come with me. Come on, let's go tear cell up. Let's pull him out and shake him down. And I have seen situations where guards put stuff in people's cells that they didn't have. It can be simple. This guard can bring a cigarette in from the streets, put it in his shirt pocket, walk in your cell, put it on the shelf. Are you smoking? Or are you going to the hole? Now you got a charge. Now you got to write up. They like, flip your mat up. Is this your knife? That, that's not my knife. Yeah, it is. Believe me when I say this. 99.9% .9 of the time, if the guard says you did something, you did it. Leave the guards alone. If you need something, that's one thing. That's a reason to communicate with the guard. A lot of guys will approach a guard with somebody with them. Just so dude can overhear what's going on. It's not a big thing here, but I've heard it and I've seen it in other states. And back to the dude that beat the dude up talking to the guard. Some of these guys get crazy in the head when it comes to those guards, especially those female guards. So you get to argue with her. You get to run in your mouth to her. And old buddy over there feels like he's going to show off to her. He's going to whoop you right in front of her. They also have the power because they can get things. They can make things happen to have you touched. So you want to fight with the guard. We had a situation here in Virginia where a guard opened a cell door. And a bunch of gang members from another pod came in there, went in that man's cell, and poked him all up. I think it was like eight dudes, man. You can Google it. Poked him all up right at Greensville while he slept in his bed. That door closes. You're supposed to feel safe. That guard has the power to open that door. Now, you'd have made her mad. You'd have made him mad. And he'd have hollered at some people. Hey, look, I'm tired of his mouth, man. Yeah, I'm going to open the door. Yeah, I'm going to... Do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. Y'all just handle it. Yeah. Y'all take care of him. I'll take care of y'all. What they take from y'all shake down? I get it back. But y'all need some tobacco. Y'all need some, some tree. I'll make that happen. Get at him. Now your mouth, you running your mouth to that guard has got you hurt. Ain't very hard. Leave the guards alone. Leave them alone. What up, Captain? What up, Sarge? I let them keep it moving. I ain't got to be frolicking, talking, trying to be friends. Send them on their way, and you just might have an ID. Number three, numero tres, the gangs. Listen to me when I say this. Leave the gangs alone. If you don't come in in a gang, my advice to you, this is just my advice, don't join a gang. The majority of the dudes I know that are now in the streets, that were in prison that joined gangs are no longer in those gangs. Didn't want to be in that gang the moment they left the prison. A lot of guys join gangs for all types of reasons. I've seen it go from being protection, scary. These other inmates are going to chew them up. They'll hurt them. Might be getting extorted, getting robbed, ran down on. And the moment they join that gang, well, they, the gang can't allow that to happen. Because you getting robbed makes them look soft. So they're going to protect you. So I've seen guys join for that. Uh, looking for a sense of family. Just wanting to fit in. Maybe those are your homeboys. You started kicking it with them before you got into the gang. And one of them pushes up on you. Hey, look, we're trying to bring you home. Yeah, you're going to be with us now. Okay, sounds good. Let me tell you this. For the majority of the dudes that I've seen that join gangs, the violence really, really started once they got in the gang. Because if that gang tells you to go do something, you've got to go do it. It ain't no... Nah, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Hey, take your knife back. I, not my thing, man. I, I ain't never really stabbed nobody. Ain't gonna, not, not me. No. It's not how it goes. When they give it to you, you're going to do it. When they send you to do something, you're going to do it. And if you don't, somebody else will. Whatever they sent them to do, they're now going to do to you. Put boots on you, kick you, beat you, poke you. Being somebody that's not in a gang, let's get into this. Leave them gang members alone. Don't be up in their business. Don't get in between what they got going on. You shouldn't be frolicking and kicking it with a whole pile of gang members if you're not gang affiliated. The only reason I was ever allowed to do stuff like that is because I was a tattoo man. I tattooed people of all races, all different gangs. So I would build a rapport with dudes on a one-on-one -on -one basis in the time, the hours we sat in the cell while I was slinging ink and tattooing on them. Then the other gang members would come to me, hey, look, I'm trying to get this, this, this. It was a business. It's usually not a business. 
you get mixed up in gang politics, those ain't your politics. That's a world that ain't got nothing to do with you. Not all states got gangs. To my acknowledgement, I've heard people say, I ain't no gangs here. But most do. You're going to come in and you're going to see them doing things you don't agree with. You're going to see them doing things to others you don't like. You go over there and jump in between that if you want to. Go get in that gang's business. And they're going to push the pause button, whatever they got going on with Buddy. Going to push the pause button on whatever beef and conflict they had going on. And they're going to come over to where you're at and press play. And you're going to inherit everything that was going on over there because you got in the middle of that gang business. I'm going to say this again in case you missed it. If you didn't come in in the gang, I don't think you should have to leave out in the gang. Now, I know there are some states... I know there are some prisons that is mandatory that you're going to have to get down. If that's the case, disregard this. <laughs> but still, limit what you have to do. Limit the situations you put yourself in. If you do get in the gang, don't be, the, don't be that guy with the tough face acting hard I was telling you about. Because they're going to test that real quick. Soon as the first thing pops up, Mr. Angry Man, hey, come here, Angry Man. You like to fight? I can tell because your face is always balled up. You look mad. Goes back to number five. You look mad. Go over there and fight him. Uh, wait a minute. I was that, That's not my real face. I, I'm really not angry, man. I just kind of act tough to keep. No, we ain't, no. Go over there and handle him. We want to see you get busy. You can easily turn a couple of years into a whole bunch of years. I've seen guys right at the gate. I mean, within six months of going home that were gang-affiliated, that were sent on a mission, Pick up another 10, 20 years. Don't be that guy. Think for yourself. Don't be nobody's crash test dummy. Don't jump out there. Leave the gangs alone. Number two, numero dos. Gossiping, talking, butting in. Putting your nose where it don't belong. It's a good way to get it broke. Gossiping, you're a grown man. A whole entire grown man. Could be a teenage boy, teenage girl, locked up somewhere. Either way, you learned this early on in life. Don't nobody like somebody to gossip. No, just don't do that. It's going to get back. In these type of places, somebody is always listening. You may think they're not. But you ain't going to gossip for so long before there's somebody else sitting over there and eavesdrops on your conversation. And now whatever you was whispering about, he's going to take it back to whoever you were talking about. And now you can find yourself in trouble. If it ain't your business, leave it alone. If it don't apply, let it fly. If it ain't got nothing to do with you, don't get wrapped up in it. Button your nose where it don't belong. That's a big no-no. Mind your business. You're going to see things. You're going to hear things. You're going to learn about things. Keep it to yourself. The only person you might ever really be able to talk to and confide in is your cellmate. That's usually only good as long as y'all are cellmates. If something should happen where y'all get separated, sit in different pods, in due time, he's going to tell somebody else whatever it is you told him. It could be six months from now, a year from now, two years from now. And I can promise you that when it makes it to whoever you were talking about, they're going to come looking. Don't be gossiping about people. Don't be talking about people. Mind your business. And in the seeing things, oh, you're going to see some terrible things. You're going to see violence. You're going to see things you don't want to see between men. If you're in a women's prison, you're going to see things you don't want to see between women. A lot of times, these people don't want other people to know what they're doing. How many times I've heard, man, I ain't gay, I ain't gay. And they get caught in the act and will still tell you they're not gay. But they're going to feel this type of way because you're the one that brought it to everybody's attention. Now, they've got to defend themselves to everybody else because you saw something and went and repeated what you saw. Been there, done that. I saw it, spoke to somebody else about it, but dude was behind me on the bench, and it ended me up in a world of trouble. Lesson learned. Let's get into the next one. Number one, numero uno, borrowing, lending, and accepting things from others. Don't do it. I've heard dudes, I'm going to go to jail and I'm going to start a store box. Hmm. Are you built like that? So what you're going to do is you're going to buy a large amount of canteen and you're going to loan it out to other inmates with interest, two for three, one for two, two for four, three for five, 
And then you're going to expect every one of those guys you loan something to bring it back to you. What happens when they don't? You just stole boxing stuff out. You don't lent these people stuff. And one of these guys decides not to bring it back to you. What are you going to do? Now you've got to fight behind that. Because if you don't fight behind that, you better hope he was the last person that was supposed to pay you. Because in the moment that he bucks, it's going to plant the seed in a whole bunch of other dudes' heads around there. Why would they come pay you if he didn't pay you? Don't be lending people stuff. Maybe a cellmate. If you become good friends with somebody and over time you've come to understand and believe that time has shown you you can trust this guy, sure. Yeah, all right. But you don't meet somebody five minutes later, hey, let me get a suit. What? If you're going to give it to him, give it to him. But if you ain't willing to fight behind it, don't loan it out. Borrowing things. Borrowing things, borrowing things. Don't borrow things. Regardless of how your money looks, how much money you got, what's on your books, your ability to pay it back, I can promise you that at some point or another, you will get tricked up. I've seen a situation where a dude put a commissary slip in. Commissary, you got to fill out this paper at the time, bubble these little bubbles in for the numbers, drop in the box. This commissary slip didn't get pulled out. They pulled them all out the box. His got left in the bottom. Now, he owes all types of people money. He's got money in his account, got money on his books. He can go to the store, he can go to commissary. But somehow his slip got overlooked. On the day that you have to pay people, they've had game ran on them in the past. They've had guys lie to them in the past, try to trick them in the past, try not to pay, running that dope fiend larceny on them. And here you come. Hey, hey, I know I owe you a whole bunch of money, but I can't pay you. I don't know what happened. I can show you my money slips. I can show... Boop, 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 boop. Ain't nobody trying to hear it. You're going to pay that debt. And I promise you, something will trick up you being able to pay that debt. Sometimes they're going to take that debt and they're going to pile interest on top of it. And for some of these weird dudes, these dudes that are all the way out there, they might decide they don't want the commissary no more. They might take their eyes off of the cakes and the chips and lock their eyes in on your cakes. Lock their eyes in on you. Oh, you're going to have to give me something. No, I can't wait till next week. Need to have mine today. Come on over here. Let's talk about it. Come on. Not a situation you want to find yourself in. Now, let's face it. Let's be real. The average person doesn't want to see someone else go hungry. It's human nature to want to help somebody. That's not the place for that. There are guys in there that will take advantage of you. They will take and take and take until you have no more. You will give stuff out and help people, help this guy, help that guy. Man, he looks like he's hungry. Help that guy. And the next thing you know, they come asking. Something you don't want to get started doing. You know how many guys I've had to tell no? I've got it. Yeah, I've got coffee. Yeah, I've got soups. I've got chips. I've got all that. I've got it. That's mine. You tell that man yes, and nine times out of ten, the next time he needs a shot of coffee, he's coming to you. That night when he gets hungry, he's coming to you. You've now taken someone to raise. And you'd be surprised how many times these guys get in their feelings when you say no. You looked out for him. Yeah, I got you. Here's a shot of coffee. 30 minutes later, he's back. Hey, you got a stamp. Damn. Yeah, I got a stamp. A couple, couple hours later, goes by. That night goes by. Hey, let me get a soup and a chip. Then you come to a point where you see this become a pattern. And you got to tell homeboy no. Why are you acting like that? Hold on, hold on. We was cool a minute ago. Now nah, you acting greedy. Like, you, you don't want to help somebody up. Like, it went from you trying to be nice to now you're possibly in a situation. Other guys see him come to your cell. These guys might even have their own stuff. They see him leaving your cell with stuff. Where do you think they're going to get what they want? They're going to come ask you. So now you're to help this guy out, you help that guy out. And it becomes a thing where they start to expect you to do it. And the moment you say no... Somebody is going to get in their feelings. Yeah, it sucks. No, I ain't got it. I've got it. But I ain't got it means I ain't got it to give. You got people out here on the free world sending you money. You are blessed. A lot of men don't have that. And you're taking the money they send you. And you're feeding other guys. Guys that are using you. If you borrow something, they want back what you owe them and the interest. And if you can't pay it back, they might let it slide once. Probably not going to let it slide twice. Giving things to people is a sign of weakness. In due time, they're going to come looking for more. 
accepting things from people. A lot of guys got hidden agendas when they give you something. There is a lot of guys that'll hand you things, give you things. Y'all remember the story of Treetop? Yeah. Hooked homeboy on up. And in due time, collected way more than he gave out. Don't open these doors, people. Now, with today's list, I think I'm going to do another one of these. I like this video. Might not do the most numbers in the world. Might not do 100,000 views. But some of these videos need to be seen. There's somebody out there right now that's facing time. It's going to go in and they're going to say, all right, leave the guards alone. Leave the gangs alone. Don't be borrowing stuff, lending stuff, accepting stuff. Don't be gossiping, talking about people. Don't walk around this looking hard all day. Hold my own, but I ain't got to look like a, I've been eating shit sandwiches since I woke up. Know your place. A lot of this stuff is common sense. But you got to remember that's a different world you're going into. If you've been locked up, you can contest. That is a whole entire different world inside of there. It's nothing, nothing like what you're used to. Go in there knowing that there's the prey and there's the predator. You ain't got to be the predator, but you ain't got to be the prey. You want to find that, that thin line right in between and stay out the way. I hope everybody's week is off to a, a great start. Enjoying my day, finished my coffee, and now I'm just chilling, getting this video out to y'all before I go pick up my son, before we play some basketball, being a father, being a husband, just being a good person, which was my New Year's resolution. It's one of my favorite things to do. My greatest joy in life has been being a dad. I never knew what I was good at. Yeah, I'm good with YouTube. I'm good with the videos and retelling the stories. I'm good with that. But there's nothing I'm better at than being a dad. Enjoy y'all's week, people. Make the best of your life. Make the right decisions. When everybody else is, is going left, you go right. Don't do what they do unless they're doing the right thing. It takes you a second to get into trouble. And it can take you a lifetime to get out. Live your best life. Tomorrow's not promised. You might wake up tomorrow realizing that the life you once knew is gone. Stay tuned for part two. Don't know when I'll do it. Probably drop a couple other videos in between here. And then I'll drop part two. The five things you should not do while locked up to keep yourself safe. I enjoy the videos. Hope you enjoy them as well. But anyways, these jails, these prisons, facilities, the places you find yourself locked up. They're all just crazy worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.